All right, I'm back to get myself in more trouble. Let's talk about hockey and diversity. Uh, what do these things have to do with each other? Well, let's get into it. Did you know that the NHL has players from Finland, Sweden, Russia, Czechoslovakia, USA, Slovakia, Switzerland, Denmark, Germany, Slovenia, Austria, Norway, France, even one from Australia, and of course, a shit ton from Canada. But that's not enough diversity, according to one Washington, D.C. think tank. Nope, no, no, no. Why not? I mean, that's 15 different countries, at least a dozen languages, cultures, and ethnicities. So what's the problem? Oh, you know what the problem is. The problem, according to the left-leaning Brookings Institute, is that the NHL is too white. That's right, 90%, they say. Seemed kind of low to me, actually. But why would anyone expect it to be any different? Hockey's a winter sport. It's played by people who live in places with snow. That's to say, Canada, Northern Europe, Russia, and the northern bits of the USA. You know, people that white people, places that white people come from. So who the hell else would you expect to be playing hockey? Well, and even so, would it be a problem if it were 100% or 10% or even 1%? Who cares about the ethnic makeup of hockey players? I mean, they can put the puck in the net, they can take a hit to the boards, then they're going to make the team. Who cares about where they're from or what their skin tone is? Just win. That's what hockey's about. But you know, in this supposed post-racial age, the colorblind Benetton catalog world in which everyone is judged not by the color of their skin but the content of their character, or goals and assists, it's performance that matters, right? All that other stuff, including race, that doesn't matter. You agree, right? Of course. You're a wise and enlightened person. You're not a racist or a xenophobe. You see everyone as an individual, and you have no preference for anyone based on race or nationality or ethnicity. No, 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 no. That's all backwards thinking, right? So why would you care? if the NHL is 90% white, or the NBA is 80% black, or that Pesapalo is 90% Finnish. I don't feel bad. I don't know what Pesapalo is either. I just looked that up for fun. But you don't care about this kind of things. Only a racist, bigoted, poo-poo head would care about stuff like that. Not you. So let's have a big round of applause for you because you are an awesome person. Good job. But. This leads us back to the original problem, the problem for the NHL. Brookings Institute says it's too white. Why is it a problem? Well, they hinted at it this way. I quote, by 2020, the US census is expected to show that two fifths of the nation's population identifies with a racial group other than white. And that sometime after 2040, there will be no racial majority in the country. Well, so what? Who cares? What's that got to do with hockey? Well, what the Brookings Institute was trying to tell the NHL without actually saying it is this. Mexicans won't watch hockey unless they see Mexican players. Blacks won't watch hockey unless you have black players. Chinese won't watch hockey unless you have Chinese players. And so on down the list. Now, there's a couple of ways to interpret this, and the smart-ass way, which of course has a lot of appeal to me, is to call the Brookings Institute racist. I mean, after all, if they're saying that all these other groups are racist, that in itself is an act of racism. And that's why the Brookings Institute didn't come right out and say it. Because worse than being hypocritical, it would be a threat to their own self-image. And anyways, while being a smart-ass is fun, it's not necessarily smart. A smarter way to look at this is to just accept that in-group preferences are real, natural, to be expected, and are not going away. That instead of being hypocritical, the Brookings Institute was right. 
it is part of human nature to prefer your own tribe. Your tribe is, after all, an extension of your family. You love your mother more than a stranger loves your mother, and you love your own children more than any other children, including those halfway around the world. Nothing good is going to change that. And nothing good is going to come from trying to change that. This in no way implies hatred, fear, or animosity towards others. No, no, no. Not at all. If you like apples, it doesn't mean you have to hate oranges. Let's not be silly. You know, even down in my own little world, down at the pool hall, the English hang out with the English, the Germans with the Germans, the Indians with the Indians, the Arabs with the Arabs, the Filipinos with the Filipinos, and the Thai with the Thai. It's not a problem, and it's not difficult to notice. You know, people can talk to who they want. And do people mix and mingle and move between these groups? Of course they do. That's not a problem either. People can talk to whoever they want. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with hanging out with your own group. There's nothing wrong with talking to people from other groups. We can have our own tribes, and we can get along with other people, other, with people in other tribes. It's not a problem that needs to be solved. Not by the, some wise man at the Brookings Institute or the United Nations or anywhere else. But saying this upset one person I know. He protested that this sort of tribalism was wrong and evil and has led to horrible things in the 20th century. And we have to fight against this evil base instinct. And that he himself made no distinction between groups because he was more enlightened and progressive and good than an evil troglodyte like me. And he went out of his way to talk to everyone. Well, what a swell guy. Let's have a big round of applause for this hero of diversity. But a few weeks later, we're watching a pool match. And he, when he told me who he was rooting for, I asked him why. And you know what he said? He said, because that guy's from my country like it was the most obvious thing in the world. And I agree, it is the most obvious thing in the world. And despite his loud proclamation of having no in-group preferences or tribalism, reality betrayed him. He too was tribal. Anyways, let's get back to hockey. As far as I'm aware, the Brookings Institute has never warned the NFL or NBA for not being white enough. They've never suggested that the makeup of players ought to reflect the, white, the current white majority in order to improve their ratings. So what makes hockey different? Why are changing demographics a problem for the two white NHL, but not the two black NBA? Is it because non-cold country ice skating peoples, that is to say non-white people, don't give a crap about hockey? Yeah, pretty much. That's a problem for hockey. Now, is Brookings suggesting that these non-cold country peoples could be enticed into watching hockey if they were to see other non-cold country peoples playing the game? Yeah, that's pretty much what they're saying. And does that mean that Brookings tacitly admits that in-group preference, that tribalism is a real thing and that it's prevalent among non-cold country peoples? Yep, you better believe it. <clears throat> and do these tendencies have broad implications beyond hockey? Oh yeah. What is the point of all this? Well, point one is to acknowledge, like the Brookings Institute did, that tribalism is a real thing. It's powerful and it's not going away anytime soon, not as long as human beings are human beings. Point two is to stop using bullshit words like diversity to mean things that it clearly does not mean. That word is used in precisely one way. To criticize any sport, any school, any business, movie, restaurant, city, or country as being too white. The actual meaning of diversity, in, as it's used today, is anti-white. Whenever someone says they want my diversity, they're saying they want fewer white people. Usually, fewer straight white men. I mean, there's no diversity movement in China, Africa, or Mexico, India, Japan, Israel, or Saudi Arabia, is there? No, 
No. No one is saying the problem with Saudi Arabia is they don't have enough Swedish people, or that China needs more Jews, or that Africa needs more Dutchmen. No. Diversity is a one-way street. Diversity only applies to European and European-derived countries. That is to say, to majority white countries. Diversity is anti-white. Diversity is, for lack of a better word, racist. And you're not a racist, are you? Anyways, I think I've gotten myself in enough trouble for now. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I need to get up to a thousand subscribers for YouTube to take me seriously. God knows that no one else does. Uh, go ahead and make a comment. Call me an asshole. Do whatever you want. Have a good time. It's all good. We can all get along. You don't even have to like me. We can still get along.